Welcome to Bell Brothers Brewing. Engineers talking about beers. I'm Curtis. I'm Cody. And today we're doing the Fall Harvest Willet. I call it the Sloshy Pumpkin. So, Cody, what do we have for our Fall Harvest Pumpkin Cocktail? Lemon juice. And that's it, just lemon juice. We're just, we're just drinking lemon juice straight, straight on it. good. Uh, yeah, the citrus head over here would love that. Lemon juice, unfiltered apple cider. That's the good stuff. That's nice, organic, clean. That one's important because like if you get really crappy apple juice. cider, apple cider, it does get a little weird. Good. Yeah, it doesn't taste good. And finally, the most important aspect besides the beer, Axis and Oaks bourbon. Now, we went a little local with this. Obviously, Axis and Oaks is made out of the Ivy Wild School over by Bristol Brewing Company. And we wanted to really highlight and shine a light on the excellent pumpkin beer that we're gonna be mixing it with and with that what we're gonna do is so we have like really good cider really good lemon really good bourbon so that if it's messed up it's definitely the beer. all the beers fault <laughs> <laughs> on that note make sure to support your local distillers and brewers with that our recipe is two ounces of bourbon three ounces of beer two ounces of apple cider and unfortunately, only a half ounce of lemon. Yeah, I'm sure that's a, a real bummer. Yeah. Maybe later, after we're done, we'll, we'll, we'll pump it up and see if maybe more lemon will help. More lemon always helps. Obviously, we're gonna get through about eight beers today, and uh, eight times two is 16 ounces of bourbon. That each. puts each. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's a little high. That's a little high. So what we need to do is do the calculation to bring that down, and instead of our traditional four ounce pours, we're gonna be doing two ounce pours. One ounce of beer and one ounce of mixer. So now we gotta do the math to figure out how to make enough mixer to make this work. Well, so if we look at our percentages, we have roughly 26% that is the bourbon and the apple cider. 40% uh, beer. And like 6% Six. of the lemon, right? And if we take those ratios and we multiply that by our two ounces total, then we're gonna look at roughly, like I said, one ounce of beer, one ounce of mixer for a two ounce pour. And that mixer breaks down to what, Cody? There's this cool thing called percentages work in a really well with a single number. We, we got one. Yeah, right? So uh, one. one. So 26 Cody's times one is 0.26. Oh. Time, uh, it's at 0.26 bourbon and, um, I'm at 0.26 apple juice and 6% is gonna be a 0.06 lemon. Math! So with that, hopefully that gets us pretty close to one ounce. I think I need an Excel spreadsheet to make this work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Proper engineering isn't done without Excel spreadsheets. 0.26 bourbon, 0.26 apple, 0.06. It's not one ounce. Times two, that gets us pretty close but I don't know why. Fudge factor, time suit, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's, it's uh, Bell's constant. It's Bell's like, constant, <laughs> and multiply with, by two, when the math, one. When the math doesn't work right, you add a constant and just apply it. Right? Wow, these numbers are always off by some amount. Add that I, number, moving on. I'm putting my name on it, make it a constant. <laughs> also, pi is equal to three, moving on. <laughs> All right, so first up, we've got Rogue's Pumpkin Patch Ale mixed with our one ounce of fall harvest mixer. Good slushy pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> and we thought this was kind of uh, appropriate seeing as the uh, rogue pumpkin was one of our favorites out of our beer review. So we brought mm -hmm. it back and see if you'll mix it with something else. Uh, it smells really nice. Yeah, the aromatics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got, uh, it's just fall scented. <laughs> I think it's the best way to put it. If you had a scented candle for fall, it would smell like this. And the bourbon really kind of lights up real uh -huh. nice and well, strong, because so this bourbon, it's not hard in the aroma, but it, it plays well with the other smells going on there. Mm -hmm. Bourbon definitely comes through pretty strong. It is a strong bourbon taste, yeah. Uh, I'm not really tasting the, I can taste the spice of the pumpkin beer, but I'm not really tasting the beer part at all. The beer's kind of lost in this one. What if instead of our mixer now, what if we did like, Two ounces of beer. I'll bump up the beer. You think bumping the beer is the right answer here? Yeah. I, okay. I was surprised that this cocktail was so like almost thirds. Because those are four ounce cups, right? And you guys don't have to finish it, but it's better than giving you two ounces of bourbon and two ounces of beer. Oh, by far. So, so let's give you an ounce with two ounces, two ounces of, beer. of beer. And then guess what? I could try some too. What are we doing now? So let's What's do two ounces of beer to one ounce of mixer. As awesome as the original recipe is with the one ounce and one ounce, and I think, honestly, if you're trying to make like a true beer cocktail for a party or something, and you're like, oh yeah, I wanna do something kinda of cool and interesting, and you were picking a pumpkin beer that's maybe kinda of harmless, I think it would be a really great mix. But yeah. because we're reviewing beer, 
Yeah, that was not beery enough. I think we need some more. We need to crank it up. So we're gonna take two ounces of beer to one ounce of mixer and really pump up the factor so we can tell whether that beer will it. So here's Rogue Pumpkin Patch Ale again. Two ounces to one ounce of our mixer. That looks a lot more like a beer now. It's got a little, a little bit of foamy head even. It smells a bit more like a beer too. Tastes a whole lot more like a beer too. It's more of like an augment to the beer. Mm. So you can taste Rogue in there and then it augments it with this like yeah. interesting spicy mix. Yep, that works a lot better. And the bourbon is balanced well enough. I, I can taste bourbon, but it's not like bourbon, whoopa! Because that definitely was like strong in the bourbons in the last one. When I think if you just poured like, if you did two ounces of beer to a half ounce of bourbon, all you would taste was bourbon. Right. Uh, I think everything that mixes together here kind of mellows the bourbon and allows it all to combine. It does. On the back of the palate, the bourbon sweetness kind of sits mm -hmm. on the back tongue with the bitterness of the rogue and the spicy around it. It's a full palate sensation. I'm really enjoying this. This is a, a good mix. Yeah. This really brings out the cinnamon yeah. and the pumpkin spice. Like this is very cinnamony. Yeah. The spices are really amped. Not getting as much of the pumpkin mm -hmm. flavor. Now nah, the pumpkin flavor is kind of lost. But Rogue wasn't too pumpkiny the last time, anyways. No, it was so. mostly spice. It just had enough of that roasted pumpkin to kind of give it the <laughs> impression of pumpkin. Will Rogue's pumpkin ale make a farvest cocktail? Farvest cocktail. She's no. not even drinking yet. <laughs> no. Will Rogue's Pumpkin Patch make a Fall Harvest cocktail. Yes. yes. On to the next one. So we have the Monkster Mash by Spencer Brew. Mixed with our Happy Cocktail. This is a lot lighter than the previous one. Uh, the bourbon is shining through a lot more in the aroma. Yeah, a lot more bourbon. I'm getting less spice notes. But the apple? The apple. The apple's really coming out. Mm-hmm. Like that apple earthy, apple-y kind of flavor is coming out. And even with a two ounces of beer, like the beer is kind of getting lost. So, producer says, if somebody poured me this and told me it was a pumpkin ale, I'd laugh at them. This tastes like a basic amber. I don't get spice and I don't get pumpkin. Ooh, that pumpkin spice beer just got called basic. I agree. Yeah, obviously. I mean, yeah. the mixture. It's, it's not I'm not tasting spice or pumpkin. I'm tasting apple and bourbon. Apple and bourbon. Will Spencer's pumpkin beer make a fall harvest cocktail? No. Nope. Nope. And I don't know why. Well, I, I know why. I just mean, like, why make that beer? If you're going to make a special fall pumpkin beer like go for it kick it <laughs> right let it make tur turn turn the knob up let it rip this was this was too too conservative so. but if your apple cider outpowers your pumpkin beer then you made a weak ass pumpkin beer yeah <laughs> well especially when you're mixing it two to one of the 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 one two to one not the one it's not the one not the one not the one not the one cody's got to drive home eventually i'm not driving right away uh, we drink responsibly the bell brothers drink responsibly and stay home after these kinds of videos be like us don't drink and drive <laughs> Imperial pumpkin porter, imperial pumpkin porter. Imperial pumpkin porter, imperial pumpkin porter, imperial pumpkin porter, imperial pumpkin porter. Imperial pumpkin porter, imperial pumpkin porter, imperial pumpkin porter. We have Epix Imperial Pumpkin Porter mixed with our cocktail mix. And this is a whiskey barrel aged imperial pumpkin porter. Uh, so it's gonna be interesting combined with the bourbon. <laughs> So with that, let's get into it. What does it smell like, Cody? It smells like an Imperial Pumpkin Porter with a little bit of bourbon added to it. <laughs> uh, the Imperial Pumpkin Porter is definitely cranking. I mean, the aromas on that are overpowering what mm -hmm. I would consider the normal spice. Yeah, the, the, you can really cocktail. smell that pumpkin spice coming through. Uh, how does the Imperial Pumpkin Porter taste? I think the Imperial Pumpkin Porter whiskey is really combining with the bourbon and it is cranking up that alcohol taste something fierce. Yeah. This tastes like something that has been sitting in a barrel for ages. Really got that strong whiskey bourbon flavor. If you're a hard liquor drinker and that's what you normally want is that bourbon or that whiskey flavor, this is the mix for you because whew, I can already yeah. feel my ABVs going up. Like yeah, it's, just, it's got that hot oh, alcohol, like not hot alcohol, but the pleasant warming alcohol yeah. on the tongue and the chest. It's it's an intense experience across the board. Will Epic Brewing's Imperial Pumpkin Porter mix with your Fall Harvest cocktail? It yes. Will. I think it's not as good. I think it's a different. So the yeah. previous one was more like a non-beer drinker style one. This one is definitely, the Imperial Pumpkin Porter is definitely more of a uh, sipping dessert one. If you just served like a vanilla, like a bowl of vanilla ice cream with this, your taste buds wouldn't be overbalanced and it would be an excellent dessert. Yeah. This feels like a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna say, let's move on to the next one. The Imperial Pumpkin Porter is a good mix. Imperial Pumpkin Porter. 
Imperial pumpkin porter. Imperial pumpkin porter. Imperial pumpkin porter. Imperial pumpkin porter. Imperial pumpkin porter. Imperial pumpkin porter. Imperial pumpkin porter. Imperial pumpkin porter. Elysian Brewings Pumpkachino Coffee Pumpkin Beer. Mixed with our Fall Harvest Cocktail to make the slushy pumpkin. Wow, the aromatics are freaking amazing. Do you mm -hmm. smell that? Yeah, that is, that is something else. The spicy coffee. I mean, it is it is like if you went to Starbucks and ordered the cold brew pumpkin spice. Yeah, it is that. Well, the nice thing is it's not all cinnamon. Like, oh, the first one, Rogue, was very cinnamon. This has more of the nutmeg. Uh, kind of looking forward to that. I don't love shitloads of cinnamon. The coffee brings in a whole nother mm. dynamic to what's going on. It yeah, is that base rich note that is needed to carry the bourbon across the, the, the finish line. Mm. This is very, very good. Mm -hmm. Assuming you like coffee. Right. This is yeah. very, very good. Yeah. You, you gotta like pumpkin spice lattes, but this is your basic bitch beer. So will Elysian Brewing's Punkachino make a fall harvest cocktail? Hell yes. yes. Hell yes. So far best one. <laughs> yeah, this is by far the best. I mean, again, you have to like coffee, but in the same sense, mm -hmm. holy crap. <laughs> yeah, well, because there's like a lot of flavor and richness, but the coffee gives it just enough bitterness to sort of smooth it all out. Uh, so you can just drink this. Like, I'm drinking this a lot faster than the Imperial Pumpkin Porter uh, because it's just not quite as rich. It's got just enough bitterness to really give it that drinkable quality. This is Bell Brothers approved. Do it. Right, this is the base. Yes. Hmm. Interesting color. With the lights, man, that makes it really easy to it's just like see cold. through the glasses. That was almost like a root beer. The cocktail makes this so much better. Mm -hmm. Like it's not a bad beer. It, there's interesting coffee flavors, interesting coffee, nice spice, but overall kind of fall flat. I think the sweet, mm -hmm. the sweet and the little bit of like vanilla notes that you get from the bourbon. Yeah, this, this is a solid like six, seven. This is a 10, right? <laughs> like the difference, like the will it yes is a hell yes will yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's lacking in creaminess, which okay. I was thinking nitro could make this nitro really pop. would be like, so if you did a nitro beer, mix it all together, this would really pop with a little extra creamy. Um, I agree. So Elysian Brewing, you should take this mix and serve it in your right? tap yeah, house. Definitely mix it with you. And put your beer on nitro. Put it on nitro. Next up we have Jack's Abbey Craft Lagers Keller Series My Bark. I am William Shatner. So this one is gold. Yeah, it's out of the, 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 the view of that is completely different than what we've been tasting thus far, especially well, considered that porter. Well, we're definitely going away from pumpkin now. We're going into more normal beers. Ah, okay. So there that's why go. it's changing up. Yeah, so we have shifted from true pumpkin, which is the traditional harvest, harvest style, to just regular beers. So we're gonna push those limits to see, will it fall harvest beer with a little bit of something else? And this is a Maybach, which is actually a May beer in Germany. So this is a uh, early in the year beer that we're doing now in September. The aromatics are really pushing towards that bourbon kind of smell, mm -hmm. like a true woody bourbon. I'm glad that we have axes and oaks here to like give us a good clean bourbon. It's a good bourbon to begin with. Yeah, especially because that's all you're really getting at here. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the Maybach is uh, struggle Well, yeah. it's, it's supposed to be a light beer in the first place. This is just a few steps stronger than Hellas. I'm not surprised that we're not really getting a ton. You get a little bit of like weedy mouthfeel maybe, mm -hmm. I think, um, kind of gives you some of those good aromatics. It helps to tone down a little bit of the cocktail. It gives it a hint of a smooth and refreshing sort of feel. Yeah. I think mean, if you add a little more lemon to this, mm -hmm. you could pop it into like a boozy lemonade. So will Jack Abbey's My Bach make a fall harvest cocktail as is? I'm gonna uh, say no. Yeah, I'm gonna go more towards I'm gonna go no. Um, but I think it's not good enough. I would it, not say go out of your way to do this. So Cody thinks it needs more lemon. I happen to agree with him. I think it needs some more lemon just to kind of like pump up that that bright citrus. Yeah, note. you can turn this into a fresher, more citrusy style. Yeah, yep. yeah, I'd say that. Yeah, it's a far harvest Rattler. Yeah, or what Schindler. do you know? German beers Rattler well. Right, and it does. It it's almost well. like their traditions work for the stuff they make. <laughs> no way, that's crazy. How the whole like hundreds of years of tradition worked out because it tastes good. Yep. Wow, mind boggling. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> 
So next up we have Bend Brewing's Light It Up IPA in a Fall Harvest cocktail. I can smell the citrus aromatics from here. I mean, yeah, it is pretty That does strong. smell citrus with hints of tropical fruit. It's got a little bit of mango floating through it. Yeah, you know, I, and I don't mind the sweetness that's kind of coming yeah, through. It gives me like a grapefruit and mango yeah, mix. But it's not as like sharp as like a traditional IPA. Yeah. That might be that lemon and the, the sweetness from the apple sort of helping balance out the hot. Oh. Wow. That makes me excited to sit. <laughs> it is completely different than what we have tasted thus far. I'm gonna need to go back a couple of times on that because the change yeah, in palate is so different. That is very different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hold on, we'll be back with you in a moment. <laughs> That IPA dominates the flavor. Yes, across the board. by far. That is very much hoppy. The sweetness sort of actually helps pump up the fruity notes of the IPA, but you still get some bitterness. It's not quite low in sugared broccoli, which I'm excited. No. I'm happy to say it does not go sugared broccoli. That's right. the thing I was worried about here. I would not say it's good. It's a hophead's version of the fall harvest. Even then, ale. There's like flavors of the hop are not mixing with the sweetness and I agree. the lemon it, is it definitely kind of counterintuitive like you would think citrus in an IPA should work better but with the lemon mm -hmm. but it doesn't because the bourbon brings in that low note that doesn't yeah. it's not there so will bend brewing <laughs> company's IPA make a fall harvest cocktail Ooh. no Next up we have Loveland Ales Blackberry Lemon Bar Sour mixed with our Fall Harvest Cocktail. We're gonna file that under close enough. The aromatics, you can really pick up at like the lemon. The, the fruity, lemon is there. Yeah, fruity yeah. lemon, you can smell the blackberry a little bit. Oh man, but it is intense in mm -hmm. the flavor. Like as much as the IPA was different than what we just drank, the lemon, like the sour, I like it. No way. The who lemon head. Who would have thought the citrus head enjoyed the, the citrus? Yeah. That's good stuff. Nice and sour, got good blackberry notes. This one, I think, might actually benefit from the one-on-one. -on -one. I think a little more bourbon might help because the bring sour? out the bourbon notes. Yeah, yeah. because the sour is actually a, I mean, it's a really good beer. Mm -hmm. It's a really good beer, and you can taste that in the baseline, but I'm losing the fall harvest cocktail aspect of it. Well, you got a little sweetness that's coming from the apple. And I think yeah. the lemon is helping reinforcing the lemon that's already right. in the beer. Yeah. But we are losing the bourbon altogether. I'm not really getting a woody, oaky, bourbon note in there. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting the lemon, the apple, and the blackberry. We have enough to be yeah, able to Yeah, you have enough to top it off. Them. When they say lemon bar, they mean lemon bar. I can taste the crust. Like I was eating a lemon bar with a little bit of blackberry on top. So Loveland I, Ale Works is amazing. Yeah, I mean, we, we have had a number of Loveland Ale Works beers, and each time we've had them, it's it's come across as a high grade. So obviously they do a uh, superb job. Their job well. Right? So if you're gonna go check out some more local microbreweries that we found, right? Horse and Dragon and Loveland Ale Works. Yeah, that helps out a lot. That pumped up the bourbon. You definitely get more of the alcohol note, some of the woody flavors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Though I'm not sure it makes better. Yeah, honestly, I think the beer itself is really, really good. And the woody flavors, I think, diminish that. It, it fights the nice, bright lemon, blackberry, a hint of creamy that you're getting. It is, yeah. It was, it was almost yogurty-like. Yeah, oh yeah. It was yogurt-like. It was like a lemon, blackberry yogurt that was yep. really working well previously, and then you added woody bourbon to it and okay. I just kind of lost the bright notes. So will Loveland Ale Works Blackberry Lemon Bar Sour make a fall harvest cocktail? No. I'm gonna say, say no. Yes-ish. It does it as long as you do the two to one mix. I give you, hold on, is it better than the sum of the parts? I don't know how good the previous beer right. was, we haven't had it. I think we need to taste the actual beer itself in the one ounce glasses. I'm saying I would rather drink the beer itself than drink this harvest. So what I'm saying is the first one we got tasted very good. It had a nice lemony, it had a nice good blackberry, so it worked. Now that being said, obviously I can't tell if it's better than some of its parts. I haven't had the base beer till. Just, just now. now. So let's go ahead and taste this and see if it was better than some of its parts. Look at that color! Yeah, it is a oh. nice color. It is. That That's a really good beer. Yep, nope, it won't fall harvest. It's alone far better than it was yeah. mixed. Drink, drink Loveland Ale Works by itself. That is delicious. That is a very, very good sour beer. Go get some. Don't, don't mix it. Don't mix it. <laughs> Who wants to tell me what this is? This has got to be Copper Kettle's Mexican style chocolate stout. This is going to be interesting because you've already got a spicy base beer, both in the sense of cayenne and cinnamon. cinnamon. And then you also have the pepper. And then we add in bourbon, bourbon and apple. Apple and lemon. A lemon. Yeah, there's a lot of flavors going on. This is going to be calm. 
complex. And we've seen that from Copper Kettle a couple of times, like the aromatics and the taste, it just gets more and more complex when we mix it with our Willets. Uh, a lot of the bourbon flavor is kind of the main thing I'm smelling here. Getting a lot of bourbon aromatics. And a little bit of the chocolate burn notes. The yeah, chocolate comes through, chocolate. so it's like a bourbon chocolate beer. No, no. Not loving it. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. He's not loving it. So the issue I'm having with it is that you got the alcohol flavor and a little bit of wood and then the spicy, like pepper spicy. Yep. And then the spicy, like cinnamon spicy, but that's it. You lose the creamy, you lose the chocolate, you lose yeah. a lot of the things that make- The bourbon, I think, pumps up the alcohol content so high mm -hmm. that it almost thins it out. Yeah, it tastes a little thin. The sweetness somehow is gone. Like we added a fair amount of apple juice to this. To an already slightly sweet beer. It somehow made it less sweet. The spicy note comes out more than I would like. So will Copper Kettle's Mexican style chocolate stout make a fall harvest cocktail? I'm gonna no. say no. No, no. This, this one did not will it. This did not will it. it. It did will it with a lot of different things. This is not one. This is not one. So what was your favorite will it of the day? Oh man, that's gotta be that fucking, um, the cafe. Yeah, the Pumpkachino. Uh, the Pumpkachino was, pumpkin was damn good. hands down the best way to go across the board. Yep. What was the worst way to go? The Hellas? Uh, maybe the Hellas. Or the... That was, was worse the than the IPA? No, eh, the road the IPA. That yeah. IPA was... Yeah, the IPA was pretty bad. So, so yeah. IPAs do not fall harvest. Do not do the fall harvest in your bend. Bend, light it up, IPA. And I think it comes across as like the American IPA. I think it's too strong and too citrusy to play well with apple and bourbon. Mm -hmm. And for those of you playing along at home, actually it turns out that none of the oddball off-kilter beers worked. The Maybach didn't work, the IPA did not work, the Sour didn't work, and as we just heard, the Mexican style chocolate stout didn't work. Lesson learned if you want to do a fall harvest beer. You need pumpkin beer. You need pumpkin beer. The pumpkin spice beer. I think the natural spices play well with the apple cider, play well with the bourbon, the lemon well, helps the you like a, You've got a mulled cider style when right. you're talking about the apple and the lemon and the bourbon. Mm -hmm. All you're looking for is mulling spices and boom, you've got a mulled cider. So when you pull in the pumpkin beer, you're essentially bringing in your mulled spices there. So by bringing in the pumpkin beer, you're getting your mulling spices from the pumpkin beer. So you're essentially making a cold, fizzy, mulled apple cider. So that's what all we have for the Willet Fall Harvest beer pumpkin beer cocktail or the boozy pumpkin or the boozy pumpkin or the sloshy, sloshy pumpkin. pumpkin sloshy pumpkin there you go I, sloshy pumpkin the sloshy pumpkin we're going to re, we're, we're going to rename this as the sloshy pumpkin sloshy pumpkin sloshy pumpkin cuz I'm good in sloshy now yep that was the idea <laughs> Big shout out to Bearded and Bored as a new friend to the Bell Brothers community. We appreciate you viewing our channel and we want to collaborate with you. Also, big shout out to Lovelandale Works. Oh yeah. For making a very, probably the best beer we've had today. Elysian Brewing from Seattle taking the best mixer today. And big shout out to Axe and Oak for making a very, very good bourbon. Yeah. This has been Bell Brothers Brewing. Engineers talking about beers. Cheers. Welcome to Bell Brothers Brewing. Engineers talking about beers. I'm Kurt. No, I go first. Here you go, man. Back and forth. Tell me how many times you've done this. All right. Next up, we've got Loveland Ale Works Lemon Bar Blackberry Ale. Blackberry Lemon Bar Sour. Try again. Next up, we have Loveland Ale Works. Next one. Next up, we have Loveland. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're on seven out of eight beers. Is this seven them. out of eight? Or is this really seven out of eight? Oh, shit. Wait, move. Quick, 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 quick. All right. You only missed one word. Did I miss one? You did. Ale works. You did, Lund you did Loveland <laughs> Ale. Ales. Uh, Loveland Ale works. Like, oh, like I said, we'll follow that under close enough. You only missed one word. Drink the beer. It's really good. Yeah. Make sure you head on over to our YouTube channel to see the full video and like and subscribe to our channel.